Hey there, I'm meteorologist Marielle Ruiz, and we are just outside of Egan in Johnson County. Looking at the damage, this is all done by a radar confirmed tornado just after 1030 uh, last night. And this is some structural damage that we found. These are tin walls that are now in the middle of the building. A few of these tin walls have been pierced by flying debris. And just a block down, we also noticed down trees. There was about a 40 foot tree that was down and just ripped near the root just incredible to see that's significant that is indicative of 65 plus mile per hour winds and we also found several down power lines power lines and trees as well as a transformer that was down but now crews are here working on the power hopefully everything gets restored Good morning, everyone. It's Melanie Basu in Collin County and Blue Ridge off of FM 545 and North Main Street. A storm last night took apart this car wash. Not only that, it ripped off the roof directly across the street from this volunteer fire department. The firefighters were inside, six of them, when all of this happened. I just want to show you inside real quickly. This is what it looks like inside of the volunteer fire department. The six firefighters were inside. Thankfully, no injuries reported. Despite all of this, they grabbed their belongings and they went into town making sure that everyone is okay. But again, that storm hit directly in this area. The good news, no injuries were reported. Hey everybody, Suzanne Bruder here. I'm at Town Lake Park in McKinney and I wanted to show you what we're seeing this morning. Now that the sun is up, we're getting a better idea of how things look. Uh, we have some traffic barriers in place blocking this heavily traveled road uh, and because of floodwaters on the other side. But debris right here is a good indication that shows how far these floodwaters reached at one point. But throughout the morning, it has receded, which is great news. On the other side of this bridge though, firefighters were out here last night. Uh, performing some high water rescues. They were able to uh, bring four people to safety after they were stuck in their vehicles that got uh, stranded in flood water. So luckily they are doing okay, but one after one this morning, we have been seeing dozens and dozens of vehicles try to come through this area only to turn around. And this bus was the last one to try to turn around. You can see uh, it's just stuck on the side of the road. It is unable to turn around. And wow, we're starting to see some some students uh, come off of this bus because I mean it's been stuck here for at least 30 minutes and now these these kids are having to um, get off the bus and uh, I'm not sure what kind of arrangements are being made but police are right behind this bus uh, helping them get to uh, get to school or to their parents at this point as they try to get this bus back on the road and to my right this is a creek it is swollen and as a result uh, has sent so much water across this park. Uh, no one's able to walk across this pedestrian bridge anymore. The trail you can't even see because water is just rushing over it into that lake. I do want to point out that uh, early this morning um, while I was out here, just before 4 a.m., we saw one driver go around this barrier. They, uh, the Jeep went up this curb and around the barrier, went halfway through there. And at one point it got stuck for uh, 30 seconds, it appeared. and. Uh, the floodwaters was pushing it to the left, but luckily it made it out okay. Since then, we've seen um, several other trucks uh, drive through. Uh, one truck had to pull over here because they heard a, a funny noise in, with their vehicle and they were searching it and seeing if there's anything that got stuck. But that's just one thing that law enforcement has been stressing all morning. When you see these traffic barriers, um, you know, don't go around it. Go another route. They're there for a reason and find an alternate route home.